Hello, welcome to eBikeLink. This is the second part of our eBike conversion video. So, I will be showing you the rest of the installation. At the end of the part one, we installed the motor on the bike and we put the chain, we tighten the bolts and now we turn the bike upside down now it's on its wheels just please disregard the motor that you're seeing right now here that's a front motor uh, that was experimental <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could run two motors on the same bike two controllers, one throttle but I will not be showing or explaining that in this video here I'm changing the brake levers to the brake levers that was supplied in the kit that had switches on, that had cutoff switches. You can use those brake levers on V-type brakes or disc brakes. They mount uh, the same way your original brakes are. Once the brakes are ready all the other parts already come with, I mean, like, like the throttle, the throttle or the LCD or the LED controller, they all come with their cables already installed. So after you install the brakes or change the steel cables, the brake cables onto the new levers, you start, you need to start putting uh, all those components back onto, on the, on the bike. The order, the order that I put the right side, as you see here, I put the throttle first, and then the brake lever, and then the twist throttle, then the handle. The reason I want, uh, or I put the brake lever all the way to the left, or, the, or the, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the thumb throttle all the way to the left was, I wanted my fingers to be closer to the levers because of the twist throttle it was already taking up some space I mean the the twist uh, shifter was taking up some space so I didn't I don't think that I would need the throttle that close to my finger anyway here I'm installing the LCD unit the LCD control unit which also has a speedometer in it the speed pickup on this unit directly comes from the controller since the controller knows the position of the motor already it shows you the exact speed uh, of the motor of the rear motor so you don't need an extra speed pickup a magnetic pickup now we're I'm going to be installing the pedal as a sensor the sensor will go right behind the left pedal so I'm taking the pedal off uh, yeah, there, there's there's basically a bolt there. You just pull it. It will not be that easy. You may need to use a hammer on yours to take it out for the first time. Once you take out your pedal, you need to loosen that ring that's holding the center, the center hub or the pedal hub. Well, with the ring removed. I'm installing the sensor, the, the pickup, the pickup sensor right there. So exactly where I took the ring off, I put the sensor. And on top of it, I'm installing the ring to hold the sensor in, as well as the hub. Just pay attention to the threads again and tighten it as tight, not as tight as you can, but pretty much how it was when you were taking off so a few turns and it will stop and you'll feel it that's that's the point the cable as you can see here is looking inside or towards the middle and the sensor part the plastic part is pointing towards the pedal which will be picking up the magnetic pulses from these magnets from this magnet ring so you're I'm installing that magnet ring. It's just a basic push. Put the pedal in, put the bolt in, and tighten it up.
pay attention to your threads to the threads of that bolt just hand tighten at first and then use a ratchet just make sure the pedal will not come off when you're riding and there's a cable that will be attached to your controller you can have different battery types you can have a lithium battery you can have uh, lead batteries which will be heavier but a lot cheaper you can make your own battery pack using either of these chemistries uh, or these different battery types and you can put them anywhere you can put them on the rear rack you can put them right where you uh, uh, where right where I'm putting it right now where the water bottle would go we have here is a what we have here is a lithium uh, lithium battery pack it's a 36 volt 9 amps 9 ampere hours battery a lithium battery and this is the mount for it so first I put the mount you don't have to install the battery at this point just know where you're going to be putting the battery and know where the cable will be routed so that's basically the point I know the battery will be going there and I know the cable the battery cable will be traveling up towards a seat where I will be putting uh, the controller or at least to that area so actually I didn't need to install the battery fully but I did <laughs> so since we put all the components on the bike now it's a time to connect uh, cables to the controller on this installation uh, I just want to show a basic conversion as fast as I could so I didn't choose a very good spot of course for the controller I just left it on the rack on the rear rack that was actually easy for me too to put the cables and actually show them to you on the video right now I'm connecting the motor to the controller the first connector the, the first connection I did was the Hall FX sensors that are coming from the motor so that the controller knows the position of the wheel of, of the motor and now paying attention to the colors of those three cables there's a green yellow and blue I'm making the main connections for the motor that are going to the windings controller to the motor okay our motor is connected and now what I'm holding here is these are coming from the brake levers these are for for safety basically you can you, when, you, when you let the throttle go the spring inside will take it back to its zero position so it will cut off throttle right away but in case of it in case it doesn't or in case you had to hold the throttle at that position and brake fast too fast you may just forget it at an like, open throttle and still apply uh, electric to the motor so what happens is when you plug those switches and apply the brakes it cuts off the electric the white connection that I just did goes to the controller the display the LCD display this three wire is coming from the throttle and pedal assist sensor this is coming right down from the pedal this will tell you tell the controller how much you pedal and depending on the level you choose the motor will the motor will assist you those connections I didn't do that's the speed limiter okay what I'm holding here is the battery cable that's coming from the battery so finding a route for it red goes to red, black goes to black 
on your conversion you may want to cover all those uh, connections with say maybe a, a tape an electric tape to make them watertight and to make sure that it will not come loose when you're riding your bike it seems like I did all the connections here and this is where the cable will be going through the mount, the battery mount that I just mounted on the frame before you put all the cables or start hiding your, your cables first test your bike first put the battery power it on, test the bike and then in the end start uh, securing your cables with either zip ties or electric tape in this video it's the other way around I will be using zip ties all over the place to secure those cables but what you should do is to make sure the bike is working first something might be wrong one of the components might be bad you never know you may need to reroute the cables you may find out that a cable is too tight right at the at the steering so make sure to power on the bike before you put the zip ties or before you secure those cables yeah like I said I'm using just white zip ties cable ties here I'm not paying too much attention to how it looks <laughs> just as long as they stay there and it will not interfere with my pedaling I'm pretty much fine Plastic tape or electric tape is a good option because you can find different colors. If your bike is white, you can easily white, find a white electric tape. You may have a black bike. Black electric tapes are everywhere. They are very good options and they hold very tight. So here, I powered on the bike and applying the throttle now. I wish I was taping the, uh, the rear wheel so you could see how it was turning but that speed reading you're seeing right here that's in kilometer per hour I didn't switch to mile per hour but that's directly coming from the motor's whole FX sensor so that's the actual speed that's doing on that 700c bike now so thank you for watching